All right. There's a growing concern about the migration and subsequent fate of young people in sub-Saharan Africa who go abroad in search of greener pastures. Channels Television and Deutsche Welle have organized a debate in Benin City, the Edo State Capital, to examine the reasons for this exodus and ways to stem it. The room is full, predominantly with young people. The matter being considered by them and this panel is the migration of young people for a better life. It is believed that young people in sub-Saharan Africa, under 35 years of age, make up 77% of the population. Many migrants get entangled in prostitution and other forms of slave labor in foreign lands. This presents a bleak future for the continent. Very pathetic listening to their stories, seeing them suffering. Whenever I listen to their story, it's so touching to the heart that sometimes I always weep. Then why are the youth still leaving their shores? When the opportunities are not strong enough for them, they tend to push their way through. Why you move is because of better facilities. Why you move is because of jobs. Why you move is because of economic uh, upgrades. Why would I want to go outside where the scorching sun will, will, will eat my skin? However, some members of the panel contend that the state government is tackling the unemployment problem squarely. We go beyond training people to do doing job matching. Having enlisted young people who are graduates, who are seeking jobs, on one hand, we reach out to employers of labor. On the other hand, the government organized a program for this return. It's 150 of them. We already gave uh, the sum of 100, what did they approve? The sum of 100 million naira and, and uh, this is 150 hect hectares of land. They have a place now that they call Returnist Reintegration Farm. Aigbeo Morige, an entrepreneur, has a totally different approach to succeeding in life. From 18,000 naira in 2006, We've been able to grow the company to where it is. We have branches in a lot of states in Nigeria. We have a branch in Uganda. The only difference is that I decided to stay put and build something. And there's no escaping the political twist. I'm not throwing it back to the people. Your destiny is in your hand, it's in your PVC. There are contributions from the audience. You have a tax rebate. So at that point, you're encouraging businesses from young persons, and you see thrive and, and foster in, in little or no time. And they can provide a lot of small grants and um, loans. It appears many young people want to prosper in their country, but are distrustful of the system. They believe that at best the government needs to do more to pave the way for the 77 percent. Let's take a look at developments in the health sector in Nigeria. Justify the spread of fake drugs in West Africa. A Nigerian health startup is already offering an innovative solution that connects hospitals and pharmacies with multinational and local drug manufacturers. Reports say that in Africa, everywhere between 30 and 50 percent of prescribed drugs are fake, undermining the treatment of the killer diseases, malaria in Africa. <laughs> In Nigeria, drugs such as antimalarials and antibiotics are sometimes sold in open-air markets. As well as putting patients at risk, counterfeit drugs are a constant bane for companies like GlaxoSmithKline, Sanofi and other international drug makers. Some pharmacists in Africa, for example, say that they are compelled to buy from the cheapest but not necessarily the safest suppliers to compete with illegal street traders. But as a buyer, how would you know what is authentic and what is not? Vivian Uwaka, the entrepreneur behind Medsaf, launched the startup in January 2017. Fake medications, first of all, is a massive industry. Um, there is reports that it's bigger than all illicit drugs combined. And that's an outright fake. You're just faking the package and then you're putting water pills or fake chalk pills inside. But I also want you to think about the substandard medication issue. So that's a medication that might come from a well-meaning place. 70% of all medications are imported. So think about it, they get to the port, and then what happens? Are they refrigerated? 
How long do they stay at the port if there's a potential issue? Then they get to various distributors. Do those distributors have proper storage conditions? Maybe, maybe not. Waka partners with pharmaceutical companies all over the world to deliver drugs directly to medical facilities in need. MedSaf also negotiates fair and competitive prices on behalf of their customers, as well as provides an inventory management system that allows the customers to see medications in stock, receive other reminders, alerts, as well as past sales to help in planning. Uh, MedSaf uh, has very robust supply chain unit. Now. We are not bothered to check the source of the supply or who is the manufacturer, is it genuine or not, is it original or fake, what is the quality assurance system, where the drugs are stored. So all these issues, we are not concerned now. With over 650 categories of drugs comprising 400 brand names, MedSaf says it's able to meet more than 80% needs of most health facilities in Lagos. Still to come on the program. Amazing in Nigeria for Our Africa Tech segment discusses how technology can be used to make learning fun for children. Please stay with us.